What's going on you guys? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about how Chinese electric vehicle stocks are popping off right now. It's probably been about a month since we last covered this sector specifically, and it's just crazy to see how much these guys have appreciated in value in the past couple weeks alone. Like looking at this chart is crazy, but this price action is not just random. It is backed by sound fundamentals. These companies have been crushing earnings lately, which of course we will dive into, and it just feels good. It's always fun and validating to see stocks that we're familiar with on the channel do so well see crazy double digit gains like this and uh, i'm excited to get into it with you guys so as always we'll go over each topic that we're going to be discussing and then we'll dive into each one individually in front of us as always trading view where we are going to look at the following charts today in this order xpeng or xpev lee auto or lee and then neo or neo these chinese ev automakers really have these really have the tickers down i like it but again 33 percent 27 percent 12 percent huge day for this sector but again it's on the back of some very impressive earnings so the first article that we're going to be looking at is titled Xpeng stock soars as China-based EV maker reports more than four full jump in revenue. So we will go over some pieces I have highlighted from this paragraph, from this article, just covering some of the numbers, uh, really, really going over some year over year, quarter over quarter numbers that uh, that give us some insight as to what warrants this crazy 33% move up that we saw today. So we will go over this. And then our second final article is titled wondering how high Xpeng and Neo stocks can go. You're not alone. So obviously if you're trading the sector, this question is at the top of mind. This question is at the top of mind whenever you see a crazy parabolic rally in stocks or sectors. Um, keep in mind, you guys, uh, many of you know this already, but if you don't, I did. Uh, I, pr I pretty much established my trading career off capitalizing on bubbles, and uh, this is definitely starting to look like a bubble. So it's always important when you're in crazy, again, stocks that are going parabolic to be able to, to get an idea of when you're reaching the top. And that's what this article kind of gets into. And I like it because they reference what... Uh, how Tesla acted. Again, Tesla, very, very similar stock, still in the EV um, electric vehicle automaker space. Um, they looked at how Tesla Tesla reacted after their crazy rally up a few months ago, and then what happened after that, and then use that as a reference point to what might go down for these. So we will use this to segue into the charts. And uh, yeah, definitely excited to look at the charts with you guys too, okay? So before we do though, I will ask you guys, as always, to please give the video a like if you do go on to gain value from it today, or if you were lucky enough or smart enough, I'll say that, to invest in any of these stocks if you guys caught this run up please give the video a like let me know down below congrats to you um subscribe to the channel if you're new around here want to catch more content like this and uh, of course please check out my complete portfolio and daily newsletter first thing in the description if you want to know exactly how i'm trading not only these stocks and not only the sector but literally every other position in my entire portfolio call options put options stock positions cryptocurrencies if you're into it um, i do update that every trading day and along with every update, I do send out an email newsletter rationalizing my thoughts, letting you guys know why I'm doing what I'm doing and just giving you guys my thoughts on the market overall. So really appreciate it. If you check that out, it means a lot. First thing in the description, but as always, if not, no worries at all. Let's get into it. Of course, you guys, we do have to kick it off with the fundamentals and then we'll dive into the technicals. Just go straight into the charts after this. So. Again, shares of Xpeng or Xpeng shot up 11% in pre-market trading Thursday after the China-based electric vehicle maker reported a third quarter loss that widened from a year ago, but revenue that jumped more than fourfold as deliveries soared 266%. So again, although it still is at a quarterly loss, uh, like like the like the price per share is is negative. I mean, this revenue, like delivery soared 266%. That's insane. Deliveries climbed 265% from last year to 88,578 8, vehicles. While deliveries of the P7 vehicle were 6,210, up from the up from 325 in the sequential second quarter. So that's a pretty that's a pretty crazy jump right there, guys. October deliveries totaled 3,040 vehicles, up 229% from last year. Gross margin was 4.6 compared with a negative 10%. That's huge, okay? So gross margin is going from negative to positive, so that's very crucial. For the fourth quarter, Xbank expects to deliver about 10,000 vehicles, up 210% from last year, and revenue is expected to increase 243% to, uh, to about $332 million. So these are very good numbers. I do want to say something as kind of a caveat here. And uh, uh, keep in mind, I'm not I'm not accusing Xpeng of doing this, but you always want to be a little cautious of, of these Chinese companies um, numbers of when, when they report earnings, if these numbers look like a little too good to be true. And this is not this is not completely unbelievable. Like China is a huge place. Obviously, EVs are on the rise. EVs are here to stay there. It's, it's, it's still early in the trend, although it might seem like it's getting a little late, still very early in the in the great scheme of things. 
But when these companies are announcing earnings, I say this because some of you may remember Luckin Coffee. So Luckin Coffee was supposed to be like the Starbucks of China. Uh, it was, what was this, like the beginning of this year, maybe like March, April, they got straight, they got straight uh, attacked with fraud. So completely fraudulent, like they're just adding zeros to their balance, like literally just drawing zeros on their balance sheet and uh, the stock completely crashed. So uh, again, innocent until proven guilty. I'm not accusing any of these guys of, of fraud, like fraudulent activity at all, but just be, just be cautious. It's something to keep in mind when you're, um, when you're dealing with, with, with individuals and stocks that are not subject to the, to the, to the U S sec. Okay. So that's important. Just a little caveat there. Again, you guys innocent until proven guilty. Uh, I think these, these companies are very cool. So again, moving on to this, and we'll jump into the charts. Xbank shares jumped after the company reported third quarter earnings. Xperia's Neo and Lee Auto were rising too, surprising both traders and investors. How high the shares might go is frankly anyone's guess. Xbank stock is now worth about thirty-three billion dollars. Neo stock is worth about sixty-five. That's crazy. I remember when uh, Neo, like not too long ago, was a sub like a sub 10, like it was worth a few billion dollars. Like I've been trading with Neo for a long time, you guys. And Lee is worth about $26 billion. That is more than $124 billion on a combined basis. By comparison, the combined worth of the Detroit three Ford motor, general motors and Fiat Chrysler is roughly hundred billion. So it's crazy to see you guys. And that also gives you some insight as to like how, how much hype is involved with uh, with this sector, with these stocks, stocks like even Tesla, like Nik Nikola was the epitome of, of a hype stock of this year, like the Robin Hood, uh, David day trader stock. So there is a lot, there is obviously a lot of hype in here. Like if you're going on, uh, on vehicles delivered, I mean, the, these three American companies are delivering way more vehicles, like a sign, a, like a unfathomable amount more vehicles than, than these companies are, but they're still worth more. So that's when you get into like, if you're trying to argue fair value, uh, at, at this moment, it's def they're definitely over overinflated. They're definitely overpriced, just objectively. But uh, the, the market is future looking. It is betting on the future, and that's very important to keep in mind as well. So the entire uh, the entire stock market is kind of a futures market right now. Neo stock is up more than a thousand percent year to date. So that's a, that's a 10 bagger. That's a nice 10 X in wall street parlance. Neo is one Chinese EV stock with a full year of trading history because the other two players from China didn't start trading until the summer. So again, you guys, I remember, I remember covering these stocks when they first, uh, when they first IPO, it's when I, I actually added these to, um, to one of my portfolios, shout out to the newsletter group, uh, newsletter portfolio group. Um, if, if you've been a part of it again, uh, this, this, these are not unfamiliar faces again. So once again, shout out to the newsletter group. Um, the stocks charts do look parabolic leading investors. Um, why does this keep doing this leading investors to the obvious question? Where can they go? Lee and Xpeng are new. And even Neo is a relatively small automaker when measured by car volume. Neo delivered 12,200 vehicles in the third quarter using the Tesla playbook shares of Xpeng, Neo and Lee might settle in their 50 day moving average. So this is what we're going to look at on the charts after. Okay, guys, that's where Tesla settled in after the stock went parabolic in early September. Tesla shares are up almost 400% year to date, but are down about 7% over the past month and down 8% since the beginning of October. Price consolidation, as traders call a period of flat trading after a big run, isn't a bad thing. It gives people time to figure out what's next. Okay, so we're going to focus on the 50 day moving average because that's what, again, after Tesla recently corrected, it went back, settled to the 50 day moving average. This is, this is very common. Again, you guys, when things go parabolic, it's it's very common for it to reach one of their moving averages. So right here, this cyan line you can see up in this corner, I have, these are exponential moving averages, same thing. Uh, this is of a, a 21 and a 47. So usually it's 20 and 50. I just like these because I feel... I feel I don't I can't even guarantee this, but I feel like it gives me a slight edge. I've just noticed it. It follows these a little, a little better. But again, 2050 is what everyone's looking at. That's kind of also a reason I do 2147. Um, but if you see here, this this cyan one is the 21. And then this purple line down here is the 50. So if we were to correct all the way to the 50 right now, which is probably not going to happen just because, again, there's so much fundamental momentum behind it, it would take us to like twenty seven dollars. So that's a significant correction from 40 from where we're at right now, at 44. Uh, what I think is is pretty likely. I think that I think Th that we still have some steam left again the fundamentals are strong uh things bubbles when, when you see rallies like this there's usually when they're backed by sound fundamentals which this rally is specifically uh it usually lasts a couple weeks so we started actually you know we started this rally in early november and uh, we're getting into uh, what we're, we call this like nine or 10 days in, I think we have an, at least another like three or four trading, like probably four or five trading days of solid like growth. And then we're probably going to see a pretty significant correction. So we'll probably climb a little more. Again, you guys keep in mind, this is just my opinion. I have no idea if this is going to play out or not. Um, 
probably climb a little more over the coming trading days, like going into early next week. And then we'll probably correct. Uh, and, and keep in mind, as this goes up, as this uh, progresses, as, as this <laughs> goes on in time, these, these moving averages are going to go higher. So it would make sense to me for NEO. Uh, no, sorry, XPeng. XPeng is what we're looking at. For XPeng to, after it continues to climb a little more, it will likely to come down to this area. You can see a lot of resistance around this area. Aside from this, uh, I mean, this right here did close right around this $36 region. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is the area we correct to right where we, right like where we gapped up to. So we're filling a gap. Uh, we're filling a gap at the same time as we're reaching uh, an area that acted as a solid line of resistance around $36. My money would be that... Um, after we again, after we rally a little more, after we go for a few more days, it's probably pretty similar to the other uh, to the rest of the sector as well. Um, a lot of people are going to be finding out about it. They're going to want a piece of it. They're going to continue to buy in over the coming days. Again, my opinion. But then after that, after the after the hype falls, after volume drops, crazy volume right now, after the volume starts to fall off, we'll probably come down to reach this initial high, which is a very common thing to do. That's what a lot of stocks do. They reach the first high, fill this gap and uh, come down to the thirty six dollar region. So that is my uh, that is my analysis. That's my forecast for XPEV. Moving on to Lee Auto. I want to show you guys this. So Lee Auto, if this will freaking load. Sorry about this. Lee Auto is I mean, is crazy. So what's funny is I, I drew this. I drew this line way, I can't even remember when I drew this, but it was probably a couple of months ago when they first IPO'd, or not not first IPO'd, but they were on the market for, for not a very long time. So this these two points, so it had to have been uh, like September, maybe early October even, but um, I, I drew this line and it's crazy that we're almost reaching it. So after hours, I think I think XPEV is up actually even like 15% after hours. It just I don't know why the post the post market left, but I think we're pretty close to this, which is crazy. And uh, I still think this is this is crazy. And it's I did like I sometimes I make these analysis, you guys, and this is a very 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 optimistic trend line um, on this uptrend. But it's crazy that we're almost hitting it right now. So uh, again, you guys, XPEV is uh, or sorry, Liot. I keep mixing these things up. But Lee doing extremely well right now. I think that Lee, it is likely that we will test this top line of resistance just because it we're so close already. And uh, that would bring us to, if we hit it over the next couple of days, to like the $40 region. Like I think $40 is a pretty solid call. Again, you guys, Lee is currently sitting at a $16 billion valuation, significantly smaller than uh, the smallest of the three. Still large. Again, you guys, it's crazy just after these recent run-ups, how, uh, how much of the valuations and market caps can climb. But again, you guys, there's still a lot of steam. I think where this is the second wave. You guys know the good two, the good old two wave theory that we have here on this channel you see the first wave you see that pop you see some you see a loose steam second wave is usually the second like uh the, the big show and that's usually significantly larger than the first one so i would be surprised if we get up to the 40 dollar region at which point we will likely come back down and test again the previous high a lot of times when uh, when when the bubble pops you could say it, the it, the stock will correct down to the initial high that it set so I wouldn't be surprised if we go up to 40 in Lee over the coming days and then ultimately come back down to like the $28 region. And keep in mind, you guys, I'm saying coming days. This could play out over a week or so. Again, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I'm not a freaking fortune teller. But this is, uh, in my experience, what, uh, what would make sense to me. I wouldn't be surprised to see this. But if it takes a little longer to play out, it wouldn't surprise me. Ultimately, though, I think it will pull back to the $28 region if you're thinking about accumulating at some point. So moving on, last but not least, NEO stock, the OG. NEO has just been like, like this is this is crazy i wish i i wish i had i, I had some long-term calls on neo that i got rid that, that i got rid of probably around here at some point and it pisses me off every time i think about it. i also had some calls i was i did some call auctions on xpev not too long ago and i just I, I, I just closed them out and it was like the worst worst timing ever you guys um but again, that's that's the game. Sometimes you can't really predict crazy parabolic moves like this, and uh, that's fun. You can use it. You, uh, use what you learn from this into the next in, in the next experience, you know. Um, but so Neo, from a technical perspective, is on a crazy is is like this is getting into very bubbly territory, you guys. Um, Neo, I'm a lot less bullish on fundamentally right now because its valuation has gotten 46, like almost 50 billion dollar valuation, you guys. That's insane for the amount of vehicles that they de they delivered. Um, I can't remember. Like it, it's not a significant amount, you guys. I don't. I don't think. Just looking at this too, this is going so crazy. It's 10x. It's up a thousand percent. So you've seen a 10x in Neo. Um, a lot of times, guys, in bubbles, a 10x is usually 
uh, you're usually getting to the point where that's that's where you get into correction territory and i wouldn't be surprised at all i think it's actually very likely and again i'm saying this for you guys who want to who who might want to accumulate more neo again the all of these stocks are probably very solid long-term holds if you're gonna hold them long term, I'm definitely not buying any of these right now, especially after today. But if you do want to accumulate, which uh, I might, again, check out the portfolio if you want to know if I do. Um, I I will definitely consider picking up some maybe calls, maybe some long term call options or something once we get down and correct to this line. So this line since July has acted as a line of resistance. We're following a beautiful trend. I remember talking about this channel multiple times. This beautiful channel upwards in Neo prior to breaking out, we broke out of it. Uh, it was kind of a fake out, and then we ended up coming out. And once we broke out, it was off to the races and uh again because this line acted as such a significant line of bull support and resistance i think it's very likely for neo to ultimately come back down to this area so i think this could happen pretty soon you guys um again i'm a lot more confident right now on uh i want to make it very clear i'm not a buyer of any of these at these current levels but um neo i think is is looks the most like it's wanting to pull back if it does pull back I wouldn't be surprised if we see it come down to this area that has that has historically over the course of this rally um, acted as both a line of support and resistance, which would bring us to about $31.50. So significant correction, but considering NEO has run up so freaking much, it would not surprise me at all to see a significant correction. Um, and it does bring us to like this initial high prior to just going absolutely parabolic. Um, just this area around here, like $30, $31, I think is a pretty safe bet. So it's psychological even. So if NEO gets down to $30, then I'll definitely... Um, I'll definitely consider establishing a new position. Um, again, you guys, we will call it there. If you do want to know how we will be trading these stocks, once again, complete portfolio daily news that are first link in the description. Um, as always, too, let me know down in the comments below if, if again, if if you got in on this, if you were holding call, dude, let me know if you had calls. Like, if you guys had calls on this, let me know so, so I can give you a, a trophy. I'll give you a nice trophy emoji. If you guys manage to, even if you had shares, you guys, like a 33% move up with just a, just a standard stock position is crazy. And uh, congrats to you guys. If not, Again, you guys, there's plenty more opportunities like this out there. Um, that's why it's exciting to be in these revolutionary sectors like what we cover on this channel. It's just because there's so much excitement, you guys, and there's so much growth opportunity. So let me know in the comments down below what you're excited about right now, what you're excited about going into the weekend, what you're looking forward to next week. Uh, literally, whatever you guys want to talk about. Always love talking shop with you guys and uh, learning from you guys more importantly. So I'll catch you downstairs. Until next time, you guys, always remember, take action, make waves. Peace.